Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I am here with Thomas Blackwell IV, uh, who represented the 190th district uh, in the city of Philadelphia from 2005 to 2008. Thank you for being here with me today. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, what I'd like to do is start out by asking you about your background. Tell me about your family life um, and your education. Well, believe it or not, uh, I went to the uh, public schools in Philadelphia up until the eighth grade. Then I went to a boarding school in Lexington, Mississippi. It was a, a religious school affiliated with the Church of God in Christ, even though I'm a Baptist. But uh, that's where I uh, went to school down, high school down there. Uh, shortly after graduating, I came home and I went to work on the Philadelphia waterfront along with my father, who was the business agent at the time uh, of one of the locals of the International Longshoremen Association. And so I got involved with the union politics. You know, I've always been involved in, in politics. My family, actually, my father was a, is a former House member back from the 70s. And uh, he left here and went to the Philadelphia City Council, served there for 18 years, and then he went to Congress. So uh, and my stepmother now is the has his seat in the Philadelphia City Council. So I come from a political background, but I actually got the uh, political bug in 1968 when uh, Hubert Humphrey was running for president. And uh, actually I thought it would be an opportunity for me to skip school in the afternoon, because my father was a committee man long before he became a publicly elected official. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, I, I grasped the uh, philosophy of, of Hubert Humphrey because my father made me research him rather than tell me about him because I wanted to know why he was supporting Hubert Humphrey against Richard Nixon. And uh, so that was in 1968. I was 10 years old. And uh, from that point on, here I am. But my personal background, I'm a former labor leader. I rose from a laborer all the way up to the office of president. I held every office there with the exception of financial secretary. I never wanted to hold a money position in any, or any organization even though I filled in uh, at times, but I never wanted that, 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 that position. A lot of paperwork. But, uh, you know, uh, I rose through the ranks to become president of the ILA International Longshore Association Local 1332. It's one of the Philadelphia waterfront. And uh, I've traveled quite extensively around this country and some parts of the world negotiating contracts uh, that, that affected the lives of many, many people. Uh, ultimately, uh, I was elected to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, where I am now, um, well, a few more days anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, so I was, I was smitten with the, the life of a politician from a young age, you know, and I enjoy it. I love what I do. It's not a job to me, you know, because I think when you get something, when you get the opportunity to do something that you like, it's never a job to you. You know, uh, so, you know, I, I enjoyed being here, but that's, that's basically where I, where I come from. You mentioned Hubert Humphrey. Would you say that that was uh, an influence with regards to uh, becoming a Democrat then? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know if that was an influence of me come, becoming a Democrat because my family was, mm -hmm. well, my immediate family from my father, uh, believe it or not, my grandfather was a, re was a Republican. And that was uh, during the, before the, uh, the uh, Roosevelt years, and I'm talking about Franklin Roosevelt, not Theodore. Uh, that's when, when most black people, African Americans, became Democrats after the Great Depression. But uh, I, I, I'm sure that, that, that Hubert Humphrey's philosophy did influence me somewhat. But I think my father is the one that had the predominant influence over me, watching him grow and watching him work. Because as when he was president of, of my union, I was vice president. I worked with him for about 16 years every day. So, you know, I think he had the greater influence on me. But nationally, I think Hubert Humphrey, actually, I, I call him one of my heroes because I think Hubert Humphrey was the, was the type of person he cared about people. And I, I followed his career ever, ever since my father made me research him. And I, I even remember when he got cancer and he got the opportunity, this is after he was vice president, he was back in the Senate, and he got the opportunity to speak in the well of the Congress. And they had the, the congressional people and the senators there. And, you know, it was, it was like the uh, when the president gives a State of the Union address, and Hubert Humphrey was there, and he had lost a lot of weight because of his cancer. And he mentioned the fact that, you know, how he had always wanted to make a speech in that in the well of Congress like the president does, and he got that opportunity, and I thought that was great, because I thought he was a great guy. Mm -hmm. When you decided to finally run for political office, why did you choose the House? Well, actually, believe it or not, uh, op the opportunity presented itself, you know, uh, some years ago, you know, as I grew, I always wanted to run for public office, but the opportunity never presented itself. Uh, actually, before I did run for this office, I was given the, the uh, 
opportunity to run for a public office, but I was president of my union at the time, and I thought it would have been too much on my plate, and then because of, of what I was into, I, I couldn't do it at that time. Timing just wasn't right. But uh, a year after my father passed, the opportunity presented itself again. And I thought that, that I would take the opportunity then uh, because, you know, people that, that I respected politically came to me and asked me to, to uh, run uh, in terms of, you know, keeping my father's legacy going. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I, that I always wanted to do, so I decided to jump on the opportunity. Okay. Did you enjoy campaigning? Loved it. Did you? Loved it. I loved campaigning. Campaigning uh, uh, gives you an opportunity to meet people. You know, I love people. I love talking with people. And uh, it gives you an opportunity to interact and actually see what, what, the, what you don't know. You know. Because I don't think anyone comes into office knowing everything about their districts. You know, but the more you, you, you make yourself uh, uh, accessible to your constituents, the more you learn. But campaigning is a learning process in itself in terms of, of, of interacting with people. So I love the campaign. And I love the people that I, that I met who are now going to be lifelong friends uh, when, 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 when uh, we decide to do what we're going to do in a couple of years. Uh, those same people who are, 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 were with me then have, have, have said that they'll, they want to continue to be with me in whatever decisions I make in the future. And I'm sure that there will be a place in, 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 in whatever I do for them because our public life is not over. You know, so we do have plans for the future. Good. Describe for me the 190th district with regards to both geography and constituents. Well, it's a very vast uh, uh, constituency, a very vast district. We have very poor people. We have working class people. And we do have a smidgen of, of upper middle class people. Uh, actually, uh, two divisions, which is in uh, East Falls and in, 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 in Philadelphia, uh, Actually, the section of, of, of the state, where the, the city where the governor lives, and the United States Senator Al Inspector live in that area, in mm. East Falls. I have two divisions there, but it's a very, for the most part, a working class neighborhood. I have uh, most, the main part of my district is in West Philadelphia. I do have a small part of, uh, of North Philadelphia. Uh, it can be challenging at times mm -hmm. because of the way the district is, is broken up. Uh, you know, you, you, you're careful not to lean toward one area of the district too much because that in itself becomes political. You know, but, uh, you know, I wasn't uh, responsible for the district being drawn up that way. But uh, I think for the most part we were successful in, in, in serving our constituents. Uh, I uh, promised them I ran a platform of, of opening an office both sides of the district because I didn't think it was fair to ask people who live in North Philadelphia to come to West Philadelphia mm -hmm. or vice versa. And so we were successful, and, and the leadership uh, uh, worked very well with us and, 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 and were very good to us in terms of giving us what we needed. Uh, of course, we all we, we want more staff, you know, because, uh, you know, there are some things that you work on that you need people, you need resources. And I was, I was fortunate enough to have people who would volunteer for me that knew the political game, and that helps tremendously. But I always, you know, I guess my labor background, you know, when people do things for me, I want to pay them. You know, uh, uh, because you know, I I I, th I have the philosophy: if you work for me for free, you'll you'll double that work effort if I'm paying you. You know, I think people should be paid for what they do. But some people just love the fact that they're in the game, that they're, they're part of something that, that 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 that's good, and so they volunteer. But you know, uh, um, the fact that that you, you in two different parts of the city can be can be rough. You know, because people are watching you, see what you do for the other part of the city. The, uh, other part of the district that you're not doing for their mm -hmm. part of the district, so that's that's challenging at times. But that's what's so 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 much fun about it, yeah. because you never know what you're going to come up against, and 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 it's just constant change. There are constant challenges, and if you if you love this business, you cannot have a thin skin and be in this business. I will tell you that. But uh, it's it's very rewarding. It's very beneficial, because it's gratifying to know that you that you can help people in a lot of ways that you didn't think you could before you got here. So uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy it, and like I said, you know, my district is very vast, uh, but, you know, no one person can do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. And we did a lot of networking, you know, even with other elected officials who were very helpful. As I said, the leadership team that, that I came up under, and I'll throw out some names, uh, Dwight Evans, Bill DeWeese, Mike Vion, they helped me tremendously in getting started here. But, you know, I had an advantage. Mm -hmm. you know, I've been knowing uh, Majority Leader DeWeese 
uh, I guess since the mid 80s when I was a uh, president of my uh, union and he appointed me to the Philadelphia Regional Port Authority and you know uh, never knowing that one day I would be here serving with him and uh, so you know it, it pays to not yeah. allow a relationship to go bad or or you, you keep in touch you know and so you know uh, it made my job easier when I got here because I used to have business here mm -hmm. so it made my job easier because you know if you're not careful this place can be very intimidating for a freshman coming in mm -hmm. you know then I had relationship with relationships with other politicians or other elected officials assembly uh, uh, people and uh, senators state senators here mm -hmm. so I knew them so you know I had a tremendous advantage when I was first elected you know while I respected the house I wasn't in all of it right you know so it, it was it wasn't as intimidating to me because you know, I, I would see new people come in and I, I could just look at them and see the way they're even looking at, at that room on the general assembly floor you know it's very it's very it's awesome I tell you, I think it's a beautiful room. The, the architecture in there is, is, is unbelievable, second to none. And I've been quite a lot of uh, government uh, buildings, and uh, but I think we have the best, you know, uh, in terms of, of the architecture, you know. And uh, so I, I, I watch certain people when they come in, and I, and I see how they react, and I say, oh boy, <laughs> I said, they don't know what they got into. But you're in a fishbowl. Mm -hmm. you know, your life becomes public, and uh, which I, I think is, is, is in order. Because if you're doing people's work, then you, you should not mind your, your your life being public. Yeah. You know, but that's what we choose to do. So you know, we work for we work for the public. It's not the other way around. So I had a lot of advantages, but I I love this place because you know, the more I'm here, the more I love it. You know, because like I said, you never know what you're going to come up with. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that you meet here, uh, long, life-lasting friends forever. You know, on both sides of the aisle. You know, because like I said, I love people. You know, I could care less whether you're a Democrat or Republican because you know everyone has a purpose for being here and I found a long time ago that I don't have all the answers so you have to listen to other people's opinions and we're all supposed to be leaders and there's always room to listen to other opinions your way may be better than mine that's what compromising is all about yes thank you um, you served on a number of committees mm -hmm. um, did you have a favorite one believe it or not uh, I, my background is labor mm -hmm. But uh, and I served on labor committee. But my favorite committee, believe it or not, was state government. Oh, uh, I think because you have more uh, issues that come before that that committee that actually have a direct impact on on more people. Labor has a, a direct impact on people in terms of, 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 of their workplace and their families because you know you cannot separate the two. And I did that as a labor leader. You know, not only was I responsible for the men that. That, that actually elected me, but I was responsible for their families. Mm. Well, I take the, that same philosophy here. We're responsible for families, but the state government committee is so many things that come before that committee. And actually, I was told when I first got on this, man, you don't want to be on this, it's a boring committee. I never found that to be true. Wow. I love that committee, and I think we had some, uh, some good uh, chairman there, you know, Republican and Democrat. You know, I'm always happy to see the Democrats as majority chair. Uh, I think Bad, Babbitt, Babbitt Joseph did a tremendous job as, a, as, as chair lady of that committee. Actually, I, I served as vice chair. But I tell you, uh, you know, if the opportunity presents itself to, for me to be back here, I would, that would probably be one of the first committees that I want to be on because it's, it's so many things about voting and, and, and that come before that committee and, and the right to vote. Uh, uh, we had a bill recently about when, when we could start the primary. You know, uh, and now we see that, you know, through this presidential election, or how early voting is very significant. You know, because it gives people opportunity on their time to, to vote where we're not locked into one certain day or certain amount of hours in one day. I think early voting is, is, is good. And I think it's, it's going to be in the state of Pennsylvania very shortly because uh, I intend to work on, on that happening even while I'm out of office. Because I, I think it's significant and it opens the opportunity for, for more people to get involved in the process. And I think while they're involved in the process, they learn more about the process, and they become more trusting of the process because they realize that they do have a stake in it. So, so the state government committee was, 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 was very good uh, for me. But I also served on the Urban Affairs Committee, of which my district is in the inner city. And that was important to me uh, because, you know, there, there's a lot of development in my district now. Uh, that, you know, I played a, a significant part in, in helping, helping that, that, that happen because you, we have uh, more affordable housing now uh, where we had uh, the long uh, housing projects now and in, 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 in uh, uh, most part of my district we have new development where people have 
the actual private homes and uh, just makes for a better community. It looks better because I think the long, tall housing projects was nothing but warehousing people. So we got away from that. And it gives people the, 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 the mindset of, 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 of actually having a stake in the neighborhood mm -hmm. because they have their privacy. You know, they, 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 it's clean. It, it looks like a, a suburban community within the city, within the urban community. And uh, through, the, through the Philadelphia Housing Authority and Carl Green, the executive director, and, and, and city of elected officials, uh, of which my uh, stepmother happens, just happens to be the vice chairman of the Philadelphia Housing Authority. Uh, uh, well, no, I'm sorry, she sits on the board of the Philadelphia Housing Authority, and I think that they have done a tremendous job, but in conjunction with the state government and the city government, work, government working together, I think we, we have given a lot of people a better quality of life. Okay. And that's what I think we should be all about. You were also involved with the um, the Pennsylvania Black Caucus. Yes. Um, was that extremely influential with, in your house career? Well, uh, I think every every aspect of my career in the house, there, there's been some influence from each each committee that I sat on. The Black Caucus is, 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 is near and dear to me. I, uh, my first term I served as the secretary of the Black Caucus. Now I happen to be the chaplain mm -hmm. of the uh, Black Caucus because I think we deal with, with issues that are uh, not only important to African American, but to working and poor people in general. You know, everyone has to have their niche. Mm -hmm. And we come from a perspective of one culture where, where another uh, 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 representative come, may come from a different culture and we can talk about our issues and, 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 and enlighten people where we come from, and what our needs are, as opposed to what their needs are, and hopefully we find some middle ground that we can agree on. Mm -hmm. One issue that, that's very important to the Black Caucus was the issue of gun control. You know, uh, uh, we, um, we, 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 in the inner city, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, gun crime committed uh, for whatever reason. Guns are very easy to get, be it uh, legal or illegal. Mm -hmm. Uh, my personal position is that you know uh, I, I'm for gun control, but I understand people who who come from a different part of the state, who grew up with guns, who for whatever reason they, they hunt things like that. But you know, and I'm not an advocate for taking that away from them. I, I want I don't want people to be able to have handguns. You know, I don't see what you hunt with an AK-47. You know, not on the streets of Philadelphia. We don't have we don't have deer. We don't have. Uh, 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 things, rabbits and things like that in the streets of Philadelphia. So, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't understand, you know, the, 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 the reasoning for not having gun control in the city of Philadelphia, Be especially in the days of uh, uh, economic times when people, listen, we're going to have bad people no matter what. You have to, you have to acknowledge that. Right. And I do. But when people are, are, are desperate for jobs and the economy is bad and they can't, they can't uh, get a job, uh, let's say they are convicted felons where they serve their, their time, and, 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 and they get released. Well, you know, same process that you go through in going in these prisons, you're actually, you go through a process of being monitored, they check you out thoroughly. And that's good, because they want to know where to place you at when you're inside. Well, being in prison is supposed to be about rehabilitation. We have found in our experience, because we visit prisons, mainly in Dallas State Prison, Greater State Prison, and, and not too long ago I was in Dauphin County Prison here right near here and we find that, that that basically what they're doing they're warehousing people they're not giving them opportunities to to actually better themselves and then when they're released well they, they're released with no skills no education no monitoring what do they expect these people to do you know so you know while 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 i understand people who hunt i understand the position of the nra don't agree with it i understand it and to a point but no one has convinced me yet why you need an AK-47 on the streets of, of Pennsylvania. I will never understand that, you know, and, and it's not enough, in, in my opinion, to say no uh, in terms of gun control without having an alternative. And just recently, because of the economic times that this country is facing, the city of Philadelphia, the mayor uh, announced uh, a couple of weeks ago that, that we're going to have a budget short shortfall and he's going to close pools and, and things that, 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 that kids or teenagers have to, to, to get rid of all their stress, all of their energy. Well, these pools and even libraries are going to be closed and, 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 and things of that nature, things that are positive, what do you expect these kids to do? They can't get a job. 
Now they have nowhere to release that energy. So what it means is there are going to be some negative things happening. You know, right now there's, there's no one, anyone that can, that is looking for a job and selling drugs, they can get it. But anyone that's looking for a job to be positive, they can't get it. Now, if you're a convicted felon, you're in trouble because no one wants to hire you. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that, that, that there is a process of you having to be trustworthy. I encourage people who come from prisons who are incarcerated, volunteer in your community. Earn your respect. Earn your trustworthiness from other folks. No one owes you a thing. You know, when I, I visited a prison, Dallas uh, it was greater for uh, when I, my first year elected, and there was an inmate, I'll never forget this, who stood up, and of course he berated politicians, and I sat there and I just listened, because I understood his anger, even though it was misguided. And I told him, I said, you know, when I invite people to my house, I don't mistreat them, I don't disrespect them. I said, you invited me here, I didn't have to come here. I said, no one here can vote for me. I said, I'm the only one here that can vote for me. I said, so it tells you that I'm here for a reason. I said, I'm here because I want you to know that you're not forgotten. You know, my father used to say there's no throwaway people. Some of you are going to come home. I said, now, when you come home, I want you to be a better person than you were before you got here. So he asked me to introduce a bill that would raise the salaries of the inmates in, in, in prison and a few other things he wanted me to do. And he said, man, they treat us like slaves in here. So I let him finish. And I, and I quite frankly, I answered him. I said, well, that's what you are in here. I said, but let me say this to you. You made a decision to come here. I didn't make that decision for you. Mm -hmm. You decided you wanted to do something that you weren't supposed to do. Well, now you're here. I said, so what you do, if you're, if you're going to come home, you make the best of what you have in here. Try to become a better citizen. Learn all, as much as you can here with the limited resources that are here that are supposed to help you. I said, but don't you dare. Don't you dare blame me for you being here because I'm not the reason you're here. Mm -hmm. I said, now, in terms of, 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 of introducing a bill to raise your salary here, you must be crazy. This is what I told him. I'm not going to do that. I said, they'll laugh me off the floor. Mm -hmm. I said, one thing, the, the, the times that we're in, I said, you know, I said, some people will probably look at me and say, why are you there? I said, because you know what? Said, now, I'm coming here. I said, I have people in my district are saying, why am I wasting my time coming here with you? I said, now, I come here for a reason. I said, because if you, if you have the opportunity to come out, I want you to be a better person. I said, but for those of you that are never going to come home, mm -hmm. then you have an obligation to tell those people, younger people in your family that are following you, this is where you don't want to be. I said, that's why I come here. I said, so you can tell your, your, your folks the reason why you're here. I said, be honest about it. This is not a good place. But you made a decision to come here. I said, so you have to live with that decision. I said, sometimes we make decisions when we're young that we pay for all our life. I said, be that right or wrong, the fact is that's, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. I said, so you make the best of what you can, what you have here. I said, be a, a good person. I said, when you, when, you, when you invite a guest into your home, don't treat him like you're treating me. I, be, I said, because then I went to what I call, I went to the street on him. And I said, you know, I said, really, I'm nothing but a longshoreman. I, I can care less how you feel about me, but don't let this, fool, this suit fool you I said, because I can get like, just like you are. And I said, so you know, I'm a real person. I said, but I come here because I love you. I said, and I want you to know that it is a better way. If not for you, someone in your family. Don't let them make the mistake that you made. Don't let them commit whatever wrong you did. Tell them about this. Tell them about your experience because you don't want them to follow you in here because I've met fathers I've met sons, and I've met grandfathers in prison. You want to stop that cycle? I said, well, that's why I come here, not because I have to. Mm -hmm. As I said, nobody here can vote for me. <laughs> you know, uh, but I enjoy it. Good. Uh, what were some of the legislation uh, that you were involved with, whether you were the prime sponsor or um, even indirectly involved with that was, uh, that was important to you? Well, we have a situation in West Philadelphia where we had uh, where a lot of businesses went under because of the transit reconstruction project over, over almost three quarters of a billion dollars. Uh, our major corridor in West Philadelphia was devastated because of the, of the uh, uh, economic impact of this project. So a lot of businesses went under. Mm -hmm. We were successful in getting $30 million in the capital budget a couple of years ago, uh, last year actually, uh, to help 
new business coming in. You know, one thing I, I, I've also learned in my experience, you can't undo what's, what, what was done. So you try to improve on it. Now, we were also successful, successful in helping some of those businesses that, where they were able to survive to, to get uh, funds to help them a little bit. Not, it didn't, and some of them, it didn't, it didn't help them stay in business, but at least it helped them financially with their families because these people are, 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 are mothers and fathers and they have families they have to take care of and they depend on these, these businesses making money to, uh, to, to raise their children. Well, it didn't, didn't happen in most cases, but we, we, we were instrumental in, in helping to, to get the state to, to, to include funds for those businesses uh, along with the, with the city and, and, and with the federal government. Uh, to, to help them sort of meet their day-to-day -day, uh, uh, obligations. You know, wasn't, we weren't as successful as we, we wanted to be, but we did try. And the $30 million that we did get, we were successful in getting in the capital budget, that's, that's new money for, for people who want to, to do, do, do new things in, in, in that part of the, the, the uh, district. You know, uh, we ran on that platform that we would help and we were successful in doing that. We also uh, introduced a bill they would do away with, with, with human experimentation. You know, back in the 70s, uh, my father introduced a bill to outlaw human experimentation in the prisons. So uh, uh, that's when Governor Schapp was the governor, and he signed a bill outlawing that. What have we found, what's happening now is some of those people who were experimented with when they were in prison, well, now they're back in society and they're having problems as a result of those experimentations. Also, we have a problem, and, and most people, if you, if you ride public transportation, you'll see public billboards uh, where, where the medical community is sometimes offering uh, monies that, that, that if, you, if, if you would uh, submit your, yourself to, to, to testing and, 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 and some of these, some of these uh, facilities, some of the schools do it, and we're against that unless you, 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 you're, you're held liable if something devastating or negative happens down the road. So we introduced that bill. That bill is actually, uh, we, we, we ran out of time for it to come to the floor for a full, full vote, but it was, it was before the uh, Health and Human Services Committee, and we, and we did report it out. It just didn't, didn't have enough time to get it to the floor. Uh, we also introduced a bill that would, would help uh, uh, people who live in public housing, if they should come forth, if, if they witness a, a drug crime or, or drugs being, being, being uh, sold in their communities, and they would come forward and, and, and testify against them. We, we introduced a bill that, that would, that would uh, uh, allow the, 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 the people to be relocated mm -hmm. without penalty. The, we, we set up a $500,000 fund that, the, uh, that would pay for the, the, the remainder of the leases they, they were on so that they could be reloc relocated. That, that was a very good bill, but uh, unfortunately, again, b because of time, uh, and, and that's one of the things that, that could be improved, how how these bills get 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 brought to the floor, um, but for the most part, uh, we we did um, we were we were involved in the, the a lot of the reform uh, uh, agenda such, such as open records things like that. We were involved in that process. We co-sponsored a lot of the reform uh, uh, bills, uh, but you know we we learned that in this in this business like anything else, a lot of time it takes time. You know, government can be slow. You know, and I'm the kind of person I get right I cut right to the chase. You know, I, I don't see the need for a lot of a lot of holding back. You know, I, I think you know once once you have an idea, you go through a process. You have the hearings on it, but speed the process up, because I find I find that, that the one thing that can be very frustrating is 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 the speed in which a lot of these bills do come uh, to the floor and then voted on. Then they go to the Senate and then to the governor if they're successful. The slow process I think it can be sped up if if, if we make it a priority. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we sometimes we we we. We, we have people that are not interested or they distrust government because of the slow process. Right. You know, but that's something that, you know, unfortunately because of the numbers of elected officials sometimes, I think because of numbers and, and the process of having to hold hearings on these various bills, I think that contributes to the slow process. But I think there are ways that we, we, we can look at to speed the process up. Good. In uh, 2007, you introduced House Bill 729, which was also known as the Republic of Sudan Divestment Act. Mm -hmm. um, what inspired you to try to take action against the situation in Darfur? Well, I look at uh, uh, what was happening over there, and, 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 and I look at people of color who, who are basically poor people, mm -hmm. who are being, being uh, killed, or, and women are being raped. 
And I think that this this government, not just in Pennsylvania, but our government, because we are we're a leader. And I, I think you know we live in the greatest country in the world, bar none. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but I think we're the greatest country, and I love this country. You know, I've been out of this country, and I couldn't wait to get back, because I think we have such advantages over here. But I think that because of, of our commitment and in, into this being a, a more kinder and gentler Earth, I think I think it's incumbent upon us as elected officials and leaders to do things to not only make a better quality of life for people here, but a better quality of life for people across across these these seas and wherever we, we see we see uh, negative things happening I think we're obligated to try to help it out mm -hmm. now some people say that's police in the world well guess what we are the greatest and strongest country in the world we're supposed to do that you know I have to be saved you know, I'm a deacon in my church and so you know sometimes you know we hear the phrase you know separation of church and state well frankly I don't see how I can separate myself from my belief do I try to uh, make people or influence people to believe what I believe? Of course not. Mm -hmm. you, you believe what you want to believe. But I think there's good in everybody. There's good in every religion. Take all that good out of every religion, every uh, philosophy, every ideolo ideology, take it and put it together, we'll have a better world. You know, because like I said, you know, I, I tend to see the glass as half full, not half empty. So it's not that much I have to do. If everybody does their part, we'll be a perfect world. That's right. Is there some pieces of, um, I'm sorry, are there some pieces of legislation that you would have liked to have seen um, but just ran out of time? Or um, is there some issues that, uh, that are important to you that you would still like to, to see get passed? Well, of course, I think, I think the uh, gun control issue is going to be uh, ongoing. You know, during the time when we had a special session dealing with gun control, I introduced a bill that would that that would 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 have the state have have uh, uh, forget the figure, but I think it was something like five hundred thousand dollars for those who who wanted to go to school, those who wanted to go to college. That that fund would pay for that. Mm -hmm. In turn, those people who who got those funds, graduated from college, had a commitment to to work with with within within the government or the cities and and schools and things like that, uh, law enforcement. It would be an investment, you know, we, we invest in infrastructure mm -hmm. in, our, in our communities, but we don't invest in people. You know, uh, if I was here, I would, I, would, I would reintroduce that. Because I think, I think people have to see that, that you are interested in people's, uh, uh, people's ability to have a better quality of life. I think you become a better person when you feel like you're involved in something, you have ownership of your community. You become a better citizen. You know, so I would push that. You know, there, you know, there, there are a lot of issues involved here. You know, uh, sometimes you know people will will say, well, you know, you can't you can't combine the social issue with the educational issue. Well, it's all the same to me, mm -hmm. because if, if if I'm a kid and I'm going to school hungry, my mind is not going to be on learning. My mind is going to be on something, getting something to eat. You know, so we have to look at, unfortunately, the social parts of this problem. You know, we as a society. We tend to deal with the effects of problems and not the cause of problems, in my opinion. So, you know, uh, like I said, there are a lot of good minds here, but I think sometimes, you know, we, we want, we want to, 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 to get our own idea out there so bad. You know, ours have to, has to be, ours is the only good idea. Mm -hmm. That's nonsense. You know, politics is about the art of compromising. And there's always room for compromise good that is that is good there's nothing wrong with compromising you know so, some people say you know you it's deal making well you call it what you want the fact of the matter is that everyone's opinion should be respected mm -hmm. out of your opinion if I hear something that, that works for me then I should have the good sense to accept that you know and, and incorporate that in, in, in my idea or, or vice versa you know because that that makes us all better people you know and you know I, I say a lot of times you know we don't have a race war we have a class war and, the, and when people start to understand that, more especially working people and poor people, when they start to understand that it's not race, that it's class, I think we will understand, you know, you can have all the money in the world, but if you have all the money in the world and don't have the votes to go along with to get something done, what does it mean? Where, you know, poor and working people, they may not have a lot of money, but they have numbers. Mm -hmm. And one thing a politician can do better than anybody, in my opinion, is count because they want to be reelected time and time again and they want to stay here. And I, I for one believe that the people run for office because they care about people. You know, we may have different ways of, of doing things, 
But I, I don't believe that there's one bad soul that sits in, 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 in this government. Mm. I really don't. You know, and some people look at me and say, man, you're crazy. No, I really, I really believe that. You know, what makes the Democrats the, 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 per, the, the party of I know what's best? You just disregard the Republicans. Well, no, no, there's good people in both parties. Mm -hmm. We just happen to have a, a different way of, of trying to get to the same point. You know, now, now the, the fun part is trying to convince the other side. You know, and, and if, if we're all right in terms of our hearts, if our hearts are clean and, 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 and we, we really care about people, then we're going to see the good of what you're saying. What, what you, if you say something that doesn't fit me, well, I'll leave it there. But if you say something that, that will help me uh, get my agenda pushed through, well, I should have the good sense to take what you say. And guess what? Let it be your idea. You know, it doesn't matter who gets the credit as long as you're doing the right thing. You know, people don't, don't you know, my father once told me, you can't fool people. People know who, who's working on their behalf. You know, so you do the right thing. No matter, no matter what happens, it's going to happen regardless whether you're here or not. You know, I'm not going to be here next term. This government's going to go on. I'm not, nobody's going to lose any sleep over me. But meanwhile, I think I did make some imprint here. You know, I don't say this arrogantly, but, you know, there are 203 of us on the, in, in the House. I don't know everybody there. But everybody knows me, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a good thing. I don't say that arrogantly. I say that because I just don't know everybody, you know, but I don't get up at, at every issue and make a speech. I get up on an issue that is close to me and that, and that, 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 that actually has, has, uh, um, has something to do with, with, with the way my district is run. Mm -hmm. You know, my issues that are important to me, if, I will get them to say something about that. You know, but then sometimes I found that you know, I may have an, an issue, but if someone is speaking on that issue that, and, and is saying the right things, then what do I need to get up for? Mm -hmm. They're saying what I'm going to say. Speed the process up. You know, the more, more people are speaking, the longer the process. If, you, if you're going to get up and just be redundant and continue to say the same things being said, what's your point? You turn people off. You know, there's, there's a, 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 a legislator who I, I'm very, very fond of. I have a lot of respect for, for this person. But... He used to get up on every issue. And I told him one day, I said, you know, I said, you and I probably agree on 95% of what you say. I said, but every time you get up, you turn people off because you're the one that's saying it. And they looked at me. They said, what do you mean? I said, man, you get up on every issue. I said, the unfortunate part is I agree with everything you're saying. But because it's you, people are not hearing you. They tune you out. I said, so, you know, I said, you would probably have a lot of your, your, your bills be successful if you would let someone else introduce it. So we laughed about it, but meanwhile, I watched him. And this term, he didn't get up as much. And you know, it, actually there's two of them, one on each side, but they, have, they, they, they speak good on good issues. But you know, sometimes I think they're a little, long, little long-winded. You know, you have to let, let you know, when, you, when you've won, let it go. If there were times when, I, when I've gotten up and, for example, the chairman of, of the Labor Committee, he saw me, you know, he's speaking and he would, come by and wave to me, Tommy, you know, we got it. No problem. You know, I don't have to be the king of every issue. I have to, have to be the spokesperson of every issue. You know, if you're going to be a leader, I think you should also know how to follow. You know, speed the process up. A lot of talking. Now, you remember now, you know, we're constantly campaigning. Mm -hmm. Those cameras are on the floor. You know, so people are actually talking to their constituents. Now, I don't have a problem with that. But say what you're going to say, sit down. You know, don't prolong it, you know, because what you're doing, you're actually, you're actually let you, letting your good, as the as Bible says, you're letting your good be evil spoken of because people tune you out. Even though it may be a good thing, but because it's you prolonging and, and, and you're telling us you don't want to put out the, uh, the uh, uh, PSAs, but yet you're going to stay on the floor in front of the cameras and make your speeches, well, what's the difference? Mm. What's the difference? And I told this person that, but I watched him. And I didn't go around telling everybody, I just talked to him because I didn't want to embarrass him. But I, thought I, was, you know, I thought I was helping him, and apparently I, I, I did something right because he took my advice. He, didn't, he stopped jumping up on everything. <laughs> you know, so it's a good thing. You make good friends here. I know. was just going to ask you, how was the camaraderie? Well, I, as I said, you know, you have to love people. Mm -hmm. And, and I've, I've, I've gained some, some friends here that I probably would never have met in my life on both sides. Uh, actually, uh, there's, there's, there's a Republican friend of mine, Tom Quigley, 
school, we 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 found that, that we we're both boxing fans. Mm -hmm. We talk about it all the time. We actually email each other when when a fight comes on. And we like during, during the summer, some fights were on, and we weren't here, so we actually emailed each other. We mm -hmm. talk about it. So you know, like I said, you know, I believe that there's good in everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you know, we I found we are more alike than we are unlike. Mm -hmm. You know, because we all have the same goal, which is to make things better for people. You know, we have different ways of doing it. You know, uh, but but we all have the same goal, and uh, I think if we're sincere about it, then then we'll we'll, we'll be successful. Uh, but Tom Quigley, I found out, is is a genuine guy, you know, who uh, who uh, really is here to to help. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, some people say, well, you're helping a Republican. He's a good man. Mm -hmm. He's a good man, and uh, he just happens to be a Republican. You know, the class that I came in, which I think is the best class out of everyone. Uh, there, there are people, Jeffrey Powell, who I think is, you know, we disagree a lot, but he's a good man, you know. Of course, I want to have friends on the Democratic side because, you know, especially a lot of them from Philadelphia, I know them before I got here, you know. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, I've made some friends here that, I, that I'm going to always cherish and remember, you know, and who's to say they, they, they might be still here when I come back. Was there a typical session day or were they all different? Well, they are different in, in, in many ways. Uh, now, I'll say that because, because of the issues that may come up on that day. You know, a lot of times, even though you're, you're sitting there debating bills and things like that and, and resolutions and things like that, you know, a lot of times other, other issues come up that mm -hmm. happen to take priority over the issues or the agenda that you have for that day. And that's proper, you know, because that's, that's the way life is. So, but, you know, uh, I enjoy the debates. You know, uh, as a labor leader, I was taught to be aggressive you know, but you have no one to pull back. You know, the one thing that, that I do not like is a lot of these resolutions for our fallen heroes, our soldiers, because it reminds me of, of, of how terrible things can be. You know, where, where, where I respect everyone's right to honor these people, I just don't think that's enough. I just don't think that's enough. Uh, because these people have given their lives for me to be free, for me to have a good quality of life. And it's, a, it's, it's, it's just terrible that they have to go through this process and I feel about their families. You know, that's that's the one thing that I, that I don't like, you know, because it, it brings it home. You know, uh, uh, my brother, my father served. You know, my brother went to to Korea 30 days to the day that my father was there. I think about that a lot. You know, and 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 you know, fortunately, I, I'm I'm not a veteran. You know, I've never been to the service, and but you know, I often wonder how things may have been had I had I served. And sometimes I wish I had served, but you know, I missed that. That, that, that draft, mm -hmm. that was done when I was old enough to go and I, I never volunteered because I was, you know, I had a family and I was working, but there's no more respect you can give a person who actually dies for their country. And I see a lot of that and I, I wish it didn't have to be, but unfortunately it is. So, you know, I respect those, 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 those heroes of ours that, that have gone on and, and died for this country, but I hate that process. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. How was your relationship with the media? I think I have a good relationship with the media because one, you see, I like to talk. <laughs> and I think I talk responsibly. Uh, I think because I'm in the business, I should be open to the media uh, because you know when things are going good, I want them to report it. And sometimes, you know, I haven't had any any negative uh, experience with the media, but I, I think I have a good relationship with the media. But as, as my father said, tell the truth, and whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. You know. What aspect of uh, of the job you, as a legislator do you like the most? Well, actually, I like the interaction among legislature, legislators. I love the hearings uh, because it, 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 it educates you mm -hmm. on a lot of things that you don't know. Issues that, that come up uh, that you were not even aware of, that you had no idea of what, what other people, or people who have differences of opinion than you do, you, know, you hear them out and, and, and you digest it. You say, man, why not think of that? Sometimes, you know, uh, the only only problem that I that, that or, or process that I don't like is the way sometimes bills are, are brought to the floor. You know, I think there, there should be more openness in terms of how bills get to the floor. You know, no one should have a priority over over no no one else's bill should have take priority over my bill coming to the floor. I think there's something that can, that can be done with that, and I think it's something that should be done with that. Because a lot of people can get very uh, disappointed and, 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 and not want to continue because of, you know, I've seen people get so frustrated and say, you know, I don't want to come here anymore. 
because they feel like their, their issues are not heard. And, you know, like I said, you can't have a thin skin if you're going to be in this business. And sometimes, you know, I believe in seniority, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't think seniority should take precedence over issues. You know, I think everyone should have a chance. You know, there was there was uh, some idea floating about, uh, you know, uh, every member having a certain amount of bill, bills per session uh, being being brought up to the floor, which I don't have a problem with that. But there are some instances where, where some issues will take uh, more important uh, uh, presence over others. I, I can re I can respect that, but there has to be a way that everyone is heard, where it doesn't take a long time. You know, and I think that can happen. I think sometimes you just have the will. You just have to have the will to do things. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think sometimes that's where uh, uh, rank and file can help leadership. You know, uh, you know one the one thing I've learned. You know, I was I was president of my union, which gave me a lot of influence. You know, I, I, I had control over what's said on the floor and what's not in my union. But I found out that most leaders, most good leaders, are able to listen to other opinions and not take it personally, even though it may be different from yours. Mm. Yeah, I found that a leader that, that will hold a grudge, that will try to stymie someone's growth, I found out that usually leaders like that have an insecurity about them. You know, and you know, we are 200, 203 legislators in this General Assembly. So that means everyone has a right to be here, and they're, 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 our people sent us here to speak for them. So if you try to stymie me, and I'm not saying this has happened, but if you try to stymie me, you're, not just, you're, stymie, you, 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 you're stopping my, my constituents from being heard just because you have the ability to do it. That's wrong. That's wrong. You know, uh, we, we, sometimes we tend to see Republican and Democrat instead of people. You know, that can be worked out if you have the respect of each other. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing you have to do is respect it. You're going to get respect from other people if you respect yourself. You know, and understand that you do not have all the answers. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why you have phones, your network. You know, when people come to my district office, you know, I tell my staff, you know, this is why you have a phone. We may not have the answer right then, but we have to get the answer. People expect that of us. That's why you have a phone. Call someone. You know, call a congressman. Call a senator. You know, because this is the way you network. And then you, 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 you'd be surprised what you might learn when you, when you have relationships. That's what, that's what politics is all about. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like to ask the members when I'm talking with them if they have a, a funny or a memorable story of something that happened um, either during a session or, or, or something associated with the, uh, with the House during your time here. Do you have one? I'm sure there is, but you know, I'm blank right now, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that there have been things that have, that have happened. You know, uh, sometimes I can be a jokester. And uh, as a matter of fact, I sit next to Joe Williams and we, we joke all the time because you know, it may be a thing of the way, the way some people talk or the way they, they get up. Uh, the one thing that, that, that I, I do like to see, and, and it's unfortunate, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't laugh about it, but you know, I get a kick out of when, when some people, uh, and I, I was talking about two individuals, but I didn't mention the name, I won't mention the name now, but you know, they, they just, they just, they just nitpick, mm -hmm. you know, and, I, and sometimes I watch them and I watch the speaker and they'll stand up there and they have their hand raised and, and he acts like he doesn't see him, but he sees them. And, and it's funny to me, you know, and, and they're, they're very angry. The, 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 the member will be very angry, but they know what they're doing, they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, so I laugh at that. And sometimes I, I, I have found myself not, not being able to stop laughing. And I'll go over to the person and, and, and I'll, I'll say, you know, you know, they just mess with you, right? You know, so they say, I know they mess with me. You know, I'm going to get them, I'm going to get them. And they get really angry about it, but in good nature. You know, but uh, I, I've, see, I've seen some things, like I said, you know, I've seen, you know, legislators. I used to sit between two legislators who couldn't stand each other when I first came here. And this one would be in my ear, say, you know, whispering to me, don't say none of this one. This one, it, it took me back to kid school, you know what I mean? Grade school. And I, and I say, what in the world did I come to here? You know, it was just funny to me. So finally I said, you know, what, what I did, you know, both of them did at the same time. And so what I did, I'm sitting there trying to listen to both of them, both of them in my ear. So what I just, I just sat back and I said, y'all talk to each other. You know, I thought that was funny. But, uh, you know, um, the thing, the thing that, that, that uh, impressed me well, is, is the debate. And I, uh, one thing I will say, the last election we had for speaker, 
when uh, most people were caught by surprise in the process. And I thought, I thought, you know, that it was a, it was a great maneuver. I thought it was a great maneuver uh, because, you know, when I was going up steps, I was getting on the elevator with uh, Representative Preston, and I said to I said to him when we were going up, I said, you know, I said, I hope we have a Plan B. I said, because I don't think Plan A is going to work. So he looked at me. He said, I agree with you. So we get on the floor, and I'm talking to to our deputy from from the Philadelphia delegation at the time. And I said, uh, what's going to happen today? So he tells me some things, but I see he doesn't really know. So when when Bill DeWeese nominated Denny O'Brien, I said, oh my goodness, never. We had seen reports that it made something was going on, mm -hmm. but I thought that was good politics in terms of, in terms of the gaming. Because, you know, look, that's what it's all about sometimes. But I thought it was important. But my disappointment, and I'll have to be honest with you, while we did elect Denny, and I like Denny O'Brien. I think he's a good man. But, you know, I don't think that would have happened on the other side, that they would have elected a Democrat and allow him to remain a Democrat. You know, I think if, if we're going to be Democrats, and we, we, we want a Democratic speaker. That's not being personal. Uh, that, that's just the way the game, you know, to the victor goes the spoils. I think that's that in some ways may have hurt Denny, because now you know I know there's going to be a Democratic speaker this time, and uh, you know uh, where does Denny go now? Mm -hmm. You know because I'm sure there's this some negative fallout behind that process. But I love to see the game being played. I love to see that. I love to see the outmaneuvering. You know because like I said, it teaches you something. You know I remember uh, there was a, there was a state senator who retired. And uh, he didn't announce his retirement until the night the petitions weren't in. It wasn't because his son was actually running, and everybody thought this guy was running. So there was a, there was a fellow who wanted to run against him, but he knew he, he I guess he figured he couldn't beat the father, so he figured there was no point. So when 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 his son turned into petitions, he was outmaneuvered, uh -huh. you know. And I thought you know gamemanship, mm -hmm. well it shows experience. You know, and, and I like to see things like that because it teaches me, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, but, you know, I just love the game of politics. You know, I say, you know, because when I was 10 years old and I worked on my first campaign, you know, when I, when I was allowed to put literature in, in, in doors on my, in mailboxes on my block, and man, I've been, I've been doing it ever since. And I tell you, but uh, the, 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 the guy who, who really, really inspired me was Hubert Humphrey. Mm -hmm. You know, I make speeches about him all the time. Uh, I don't know too much about his son, the, the one that became the attorney general. I don't know too much about him and should have become governor. Instead, we got the Ventura, the wrestler. But um, Hubert Humphrey was, was, was a great man in my book. Great guy. How would you like your tenure as a House member to be remembered? Someone that, that, that was easy to, to, to get along with, someone who did show leadership, Someone that always had an open ear for another opinion. You know, someone who loves people. You know, someone who had great respect for this house, great respect for the people that worked here. Uh, more especially, I think, the staff that works in this building. Second to none. I don't, I don't think, I don't think they're, they're paid enough mm. uh, because they do a great job. I think they cover our backs, you know, a lot of times when no one else will. You know, they work long hours. Even though you know rules have changed in terms of the compensation, but you know I, I see them still here sometime late at night, on their own time, and I, I think they're dedicated people. You know they're willing to learn, and I, I think they're the ones that actually make this place work. This place work. You know we come and go. Mm -hmm. You know these are career people who deserve a lot of credit for what actually does get done here. That's good. You know because I won't give them the bad because a lot of times we're the reason that is, that is bad. But uh, they're, they're, they're very good people here. You know, uh, it's just a shame that they're not really paid what they're worth. Yeah. You know, because uh, without them, we wouldn't make it. Mm -mm. Finally, what advice would you give to someone who is interested in, in starting a life in politics? Well, get involved in your community first. You know, don't do it because you're looking to make money, because you won't. You know, uh, I took a pay cut to come here. Because there are some things to me that, are, that should be more important than just, just money. We need money to live on. We should have a decent salary, which we do have a decent salary. Uh, uh, but if, if you want to get in the game of politics, understand what community is all about. Understand what people are all about. You know, uh, 
Never get, and I'll say what my father told me, never get bigger than the people that you serve. Because the day that you think you're bigger than them, that's the day you're going to fall. You know, but I found that, you know, if, if something should happen to you uh, while you're in office, if you, if, if you, treat, the way pe you treat people on your way up the way you want to be treated, because mm -hmm. if you ever fall, they're going to cushion your fall. You know, and so, you know, understand the issues, but, but be a community person. Be a person that, that is not looking for credit. You know, just want to do the right thing. Yeah. You know, as long as you keep that, in my mind, your philosophy, real simple. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Be interested in wanting to give people a better quality of life. Does not mean that you have to be in elective office. You know, just in your community. Be a block captain. You just be a street sweeper. Yeah. Whatever you decide to do, as Martin Luther King said, be the best at whatever you do. And people will recognize that. You know, remember, People don't, are not born to be leaders. Leadership is cultivated. You have to be taught how to be, be a leader. But if your heart is right, that's half the battle. You know, love your neighbors. You know, do everything you can that's good for your community. You'll be successful. And a lot of times, being that way is more rewarding than being in an elective office. Because, you know, in, 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 there's a, a lot of sacrifice in being an elected official because you spend a lot of time away from home. You know, uh, uh, that's something that I experienced, you know, and I guess that's part of the reason why I didn't run the first time I had the opportunity to, mm -hmm. to do so because I had young k kids at the time. And, and sometimes, you know, you're resentful of the fact when your parents can't be there when you want them to be there. And we live a good life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where there are a lot of advantages to being an elected official, being a member of a family that, that, that's in the elective uh, uh, office. There are also some times when, you know, you go, you, you, you're, you're in the sports and you, you want your parents there, they can't be there because they're, they're somewhere else. But, you know, so your, your older siblings have to take the place. There's a price to pay, but it's very rewarding, very rewarding. So anybody that's interested in, in politics, remember, it's, it's, just, it's just a matter of being committed to your ideals and knowing what you represent. Representative Thomas Blackwell, I'd like to thank you very much for participating in our oral history program and sharing your stories with us today. Thank you for the opportunity. And good luck with everything in the future. Thank you. Thanks.